Here we are in our field corn patch, and you're probably thinking, well, gee, it doesn't look any different than the sweet corn patch, and you would be right. It's planted the same way. We treat it and grow it the same way. The main difference will come at harvest time, though. This field corn, sometimes it's called ornamental corn, sometimes people call it Indian corn, is going to be dried on the cob and then used to make cornmeal. So it's not going to be eaten as fresh corn on the cob like the sweet corn is. This happens to be a variety called Mandan Bride. It's an open pollinated corn. This is what the seed looks like. You can see it's all different colors. So the eels are very pretty. We grew this corn every year we homesteaded in northern Maine. We saved our seed from year to year. In fact, that seed I just showed you is seed that I saved from this patch that I grew last year. This corn, in addition to being used for cornmeal, we love happen to love cornbread, corn sticks. But in addition to all those uses that you would use cornmeal for, this corn also makes a great supplemental animal feed. So if you're raising chickens, uh, hens, if you have a raising a pig, this is a great supplemental animal feed product that you can grow on your homestead. It doesn't take a whole lot of space. This plot is probably oh seven or eight feet wide and maybe 15, 16 feet long. Again, it's planted in a block. That's for pollination purposes. As you can see down at the far end, there are stakes that I've left in the ground. And at this end here, there are also stakes in the ground. When I plant, I pound my stakes into the ground, just like the uh, sweet corn, 12 to 14 inches apart. I'll run string from one stake down to the other. Then I'll use my hoe to make my furrow to plant my seed. That way I'm sure my rows are nice and straight. Once again, these rows are about 12 to 14 inches apart. And I'm going to be thinning these corn plants. You can see they're quite thick, way too thick actually. And I'm gonna be thinning them out so they're about 12 inches apart. Why did I plant them so thick to begin with? Isn't that a waste of seed? Well, there's two reasons. First, I saved the seed from last year. I wasn't sure how viable the seed would be, so I always plant thick in the event that I have a lot of dud seeds. Hopefully, I'll get a crop by planting so many seeds. Second reason is last year we had a mouse explosion, and <clears throat> it devastated our corn patch, among other things. Fortunately, we haven't had the mouse problem that we had last year. So now I have to come along and thin the patch out. I will also be hilling up this corn just like I did in the sweet corn patch. Thinning is a hard operation. It's a pretty painful process to get rid of a plant that's healthy. But unless you do a thinning operation, whether you're thinning carrots or whether you're thinning beets, or in this case, our field corn, you really end up not getting very much of a crop because the plants are too crowded. So the, the idea is, or the, the question is, how do you decide what to get rid of and what to keep? And my approach is, first of all, always to get rid of the obvious. So anything that's small or runty or um, not growing very well, that's going to be one of the first to go. I want these space probably somewhere between 12 to 14 inches apart. So I'm going to get rid of this one here in the middle. I'm going to keep those two for starters. You could cut it out or you could yank it out. And this one kind of looks small. That one's growing right next to this great big tall guy, big strong guy. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of the one next to it. So we're just going to keep doing this right on down the line, getting rid of the smallest, keeping the best. And if you do raise any animals, this supplemental animal feed that it provides helps keep the cost 
of their feed bill down and it gives you a little bit more freedom and independence and you're not so reliant on the feed store for your animal food. This is Ron and I'll finish this video. Doesn't this look great? Lush and vigorous growth. But how things can change. Look at what a downpour and wind did overnight. Next morning we sure had a mess. But we recovered and you can too. Here's how we did it. We pounded tall sturdy stakes at each row end. And longer rows may need additional posts. Then we used strong wire but rope, cable, clothesline cable, all will work. We ran the wire down one side of the row and then carefully lifted each corn stalk upright as I ran the wire back to the starter post. This is a two or more person job and the idea is to sandwich the corn stalks between the two wires so they can't flop over again. Then we took short four inch pieces of wire and tied the two wires together every few feet down the line. So now the stalks are supporting each other as well as supported by wires down the line. We repeated this process for each row of corn that we had. In time, they'll heal and they will be fine. It's looking better already. Don't be afraid to run supports off to an anchor point if needed. It's imperative the corn doesn't flop again. There are corn shellers around, but for the smaller quantities of field corn we deal with, maybe 150 years, I prefer to do it by hand. I wait until the corn is dried on the cob. The kernels will be hard. If you try to indent them with a fingernail, you can't do it. It's, it's that hard. With the rotating motion of my hands, I'll loosen the kernels on one end. And once it's all started, I just work up the cob, peeling them off. It's very easy. It doesn't take long. I might do a couple dozen and then do something else for a spell. I find if I sit there and try and do it all at once, I get blisters on my fingers. When all the cobs are shelled, we winnow like any seed or grain between buckets on a windy day. Or if there's no wind, we'll use a fan. Once everything is cleaned, it's put in a large bowl to dry further. And that of course is done inside the house. Once we feel it is properly dried, the corn is then stored in airtight jars on shelves under our hand grinder. Joanna will grind some fresh as needed. Thanks for watching. Ask any questions in the comments section below.